this is Lois DeWitt. Um, I have started a series of new classes here locally um, that I <clears throat> mainly have been requested by students of mine that wanted to go into other areas. And because I've been doing a lot of work with colored pencils, I've, I've been showing people my technique for working with colored pencils. And I wanted to share that with you. Um, there are basic drawing techniques that people can use for getting going with colored pencil. Uh, in this particular case, um, I am showing people the way I work as a kind of a basic exercise to get them going with colored pencil. I've just started and I'm going to, to continue on this so you can see the kind of technique. Um, <clears throat> it's very similar to the technique I use for my oil paintings, just using with colored pencils instead. Um, what you need is pretty simple, actually. Um, I have an automatic pencil sharpener. Um, I've had it for a long time. I, I really, you can have a manual pencil sharpener, too. But this is just a really wonderful thing. Well worth it, not only for colored pencils, but also for any kind of drawing. Um, it, it's easy to sharpen pencils and... Um, if you can afford it, I highly recommend it. I have also just a little light that I have on the table for teaching. Um, it has a compact fluorescent in it to save money, which is nice. It's fully adjustable. And when the sun goes away, we don't have adequate light in the studio here, then I use that light. And that's kind of an important thing to have as well. Then what I have here is a set of Prismacolor pencils. I think Prismacolors are a one, wonderful pencil. Um, this particular set that I got um, for Christmas actually was a set of 24, and then I also additionally have about 12 or 15 pencils that I have collected. So I have a really good collection. If you want to start out with just a set of 12, that's perfectly, perfectly acceptable. Um, the thing about having more colors is that you can use more colors in, in your colored pencils. And that's, um, that's kind of a nice way to go, too. But some students can't really afford um, the, the, um, the cost of a 24 pencil set. So I say, well, get the 12 then and, and, and see how you go. And then you can keep adding to it. Actually, Prismacolors can be purchased in any art store or online singly. So that's my collection of colored pencils right there just so you could get a better look. And then I'm just working on a spiral bound sketchbook. This of course is the drawing I'm working on right now which is very similar to the kind of subject matter I use for my oil paintings. Um, I, what I did here is I just ruled out a margin very lightly with a lead pencil uh, and a ruler um, to make it a certain size. Uh, in this case, if the drawing turns out, I will have it matted to float it so that the mat will come probably about a quarter of an inch or an eighth an in, of an inch away from the drawing itself. It's really a nice way of presenting a, a drawing. So keep in mind when you start your drawing um, what kind of mat board you may want to have for it and how you're going to present it. Um, in case it turns out to be a good drawing, you'll really want to do that. You'll want to mat it um, and glass it and frame it and have it up. I think also with uh, beginning work or early work, I encourage students to mat and at least mat and put in a, a, a sleeve, a cellophane sleeve, or mat and glass and frame uh, one of their works, uh, beginning works. It's really important to have that up as a reference to inspire you and encourage you to keep going with whatever you're working with, painting or drawing or wh just whatever. I'm going to describe a little bit about the progress I've made with this drawing so far. I'm working basically left to right. Uh, that's just kind of the way I, I work. Um, and uh, the beauty of a colored pencil is that you can actually bring up um, uh, some really nice, solid, lovely colors. And these actually tend to be very, very permanent. I have colored pencil drawings that I did 20 years ago that are still in re really fine shape. The colors have not altered. I've used 
uh, good quality sketchbook paper. In this case, this is a, a, a fairly inexpensive sketchbook that's spiral bound, but it's acid free. And I highly recommend using this kind of paper. Um, consider your work always an investment. Um, not all work is going to turn out, but when it does, you really want to have it, uh, you want to be able to preserve it. So use the best Imagine materials. The, the, uh, drawing like this is probably going to take several hours to finish, so, but um, limited with a video. So I really never liked the idea of working really, really fast. I know there's a lot of videos that are time lapse, so there, there are speed drawing and speed painting. Um, I can't imagine that that is very much more effective than if I did that in a class. <laughs> speed drew or speed painted. So, but what I am going to do is just work on this and take little snippets of my progress from time to time, so you can see. Um, I'm working at a normal speed, and then um, you can see as, as the work progresses how I am developing it. And I think that's just a, a little better way of teaching a technique. But bringing in a different green here. And then I'll also put in a darker green on the leaves. So this is a dark blue that's going to be the shadow. And the dark blue turns into a dark green when put over green. So this is sort of the transparency of colored pencils. Yeah, as I'm making these shapes in here, black, um, it adds depth and also brings out the other shapes of the leaves. So we say if you want to emphasize the shapes, there's two ways of doing it. You can alter the color of the shape itself or alter the background. In this case, I'm altering the background. bringing in another shading and another color now in this area to bring up the contrast a little of the background. So this is an orange on top of the blue, which has turned green. So you can get some really nice blends of rich color this way. Of that orange over in this area too to pick up that color. You can see how nicely these colors blend in. I'm going to <clears throat> bring in some black as a background color over here. And you can see how the black emphasizes the shapes. Um, 
just pressing down to really make it nice and solid. Good solid black. So this reads as kind of a foliage background or shadow color. And you can't maybe see it, but I have a faint pencil line there that is the guide for the edge of the drawing. So you can see how nicely these colors are beginning to work together for our design. And again, I'm just adding these shapes as I go along, letting the shapes inspire me. I'm going to continue the rust over here, maybe just to there. I'm going to add some of this aquamarine to the purple I put in. Over here to start filling this in. And then I think I will probably make some leaf shapes over here to repeat this pattern here. And maybe starting right there. So I'm drawing them in there, sort of almost operate like arrows to kind of bring your, your vision in and around these shapes right here. I think oftentimes when one works from their imagination, they kind of do that automatically. These are very stylized shapes, but they are going to make shapes here with purple, just initially a purple color, probably with the idea that it's going to become a different color depending on how it interacts with the rest of the drawing. And then after I'm done with this purple area here, I'm going to fill in these leaf shapes. Okay, now <clears throat> I've finished that purple area. So I'm, now this is just the initial color to see how it's going to look in the composition. So I'm just basically coloring these shapes in right now with the thought that these colors are probably going to change and the configurations around them are probably going to change too. Now I have these shapes just uh, primarily filled in here and I'm, I'm thinking I want to bring in <clears throat> another shape in be behind here um, and I think black or this indigo might be a really good way to go so <clears throat> I'm just going to start penciling in um, some different kinds of shapes in here. Leaf shapes again. To make a background. You can see how I'm sort of layering this. Um, maybe a leaf there. So this will eventually read like a kind of a background.
composition is coming together now. Um, I have just filled in these leaf shapes here and the purple grass shapes here and then the background dark blue shapes here, just initially shading them in. So now I can develop the color further. I think this, um, I'm going to complete this shape though before I start this so I can see how these interact with the background. I want to have everything bright and fairly flat. Filling in all of the color like I did gives me a really good idea of how this whole composition is going to start um, interacting with itself. So uh, again, I'm, I want to make sure that all of the bright colors that I'm using play well one against the other. And these are just initially shaded in now. Something I always recommend doing, get all the color in first and then go back and adjust it according to the way you want your composition to grow and finish up. What I'm going to do next now <clears throat> is to bring in a, another color, maybe um, a red or an orange into this purple and start solidifying that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the leaves and then these shadow leaves here as well. And then <clears throat> this will have to be a, a little more solid uh, so that everything, how this yellow is just starting to pop. Next, I'm going to do these dark shapes darker. I filled in the dark blue leaf forms here. They make a really nice background against this very, very bright yellow. And this proves to me, I think, that this has to be very dark in the back. But before I do that, I'm going to go into these leaf shapes here and solidify them. Um, I'm thinking um, I may make them very similar to these over here. So I'm going to start here with this green. And make these shapes more solid. Although this isn't, they're not going to be just this color. <clears throat> but I'm going to bring in some other colors too. It has really made a, a nice green pattern. I have filled it in a bit and I'm going to go into, um, I'm thinking that I'm going to use a different, maybe like a brown to shade these leaves to bring in some other color contrasts. See how this works. Sometimes you just have to experiment. I have <clears throat> completed this area here with these leaf shapes. Green and then brought in this sort of rust brown which I think worked really well. They're very solid shapes now. I think I'm going to go into the dark blue <clears throat> and just define them a little bit more. Then I'm going to go into the purple. <clears throat> and solidify these um, grass type. So now I'm I'm gonna start on these um, shapes here. I'm not quite sure what color I'm going to combine, and um, yet I'm thinking that maybe a pink or coral color might be interesting. So I'm just going to. Um, change this green a little bit, make it a little yellower by adding a yellow green on some of the leaves here. I think the, the pink and the purple, purple for these grass type shapes worked very well. And you can see that in a composition like this where all of the color is just about put in, there's definitely something has to be done here. It is the only shaded area left. And my original idea was to uh, make it solid. And I think I will. And I'm, I'm sort of liking this purple color. So I'm going to add it to this corner. You can see that it would be important to do that because right now it just doesn't hold up against all of the, the solid color. There. So I'm going to be working upside down here because I don't want to rest my hand on this area here, even though the, the colored pencil isn't very, it has a wax content, so it doesn't really smear, but I 
don't want to blend the colors where I really don't want them to be blended. So I'm going to start over on this side like this. So you can see that um, I have banking these color areas here solid really helped and I think I'm just about done with this. Did this take a couple hours? Yes, it certainly did. You probably have realized by now that you can use any drawing configuration with this technique. So I tell my students, use circles, serpentine shapes, leaf shapes, car shapes, boat shapes, geometrical shapes. It doesn't matter. Put the shapes down. Put in the preliminary color. Make sure you have all your color in before you make major compositional decisions. And then just work with your beautiful colored pencils. This teaches a really good shading technique, shading against solid areas. It teaches about how color interacts and how important the shape is and where the shape isn't. I would say give this a try. Give this technique a try. Get some colored pencils. Um, just work right out of your imagination. Um, use shapes that you like. You can stencil them and draw them, whatever you want to do, and employ this technique to bring in the color into your composition. Scan this in a little bit closer so you can see how the color was put down. Was that fun? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs>